Today I'm going to show you Midwest cities where you can almost live on social security alone. These places are cheap. Welcome back everyone. We all know that social security doesn't pay much. The average in 2024 for a single person is around $950 or $1450 a month for a couple. But those numbers are factoring in people who got in early for some reason or maybe they were disabled now they collect social security. There's a lot that goes into it but what we're talking about today in this video are the people who work most most of their lives and paid into social security. If you did it right, you'll get somewhere around the maximum. And right now in 2024, that can be somewhere around 2,700 all the way up to 5,000. Now, are these places perfect? No, if they were, they would be terribly expensive and we wouldn't be talking about them. And that's what we're doing today. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. First up on our list of Midwest cities where retired couples can live the good life on nothing but social security is Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yep, you heard me right, South Dakota. It's not just about Mount Rushmore, biker rallies, and bison herds anymore. South Dakota was recently crowned one of the best states to retire in the US, and Sioux Falls is like the sparkling tiara on top of it. Yes, that's right, there seems to be a trend of people retiring to cold climates. Why? Why you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's got a lot of senior friendly perks, an abundance of amenities, healthcare is so top notch it practically pampers you, and more entertainment than you'd expect in a city whose biggest fan might just be a buffalo. The housing market? Let's just say your retirement nest egg won't feel like it's being scrambled. South Dakota has a great livability score, and Sioux Falls is even better. Their main knock though, it's the cold weather. You're going to be shoveling some snow occasionally, or you're going to have to hire the kid down the street to shovel your snow. But you can live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota without needing to pan for gold. Here's the numbers. The cost of living in Sioux Falls is 9% lower than the national average. The median home price is about $330. The average rent for a two bedroom in Sioux Falls, South Dakota is $1,130. That's in 2024 and their livability score is 87. Anything above 75 is usually pretty good. When you start getting into the 80s, it's really good. Number nine, Worthington, Ohio. One hidden gem in Ohio that's been flying under the radar for years now is Worthington, where you can get the holy trifecta of affordability, historical charm, and all the modern conveniences you need without paying the New England price tags. In case you don't know, living in New England, it's a bit pricey. I was just there. Picture this. Worthington is a tight-knit community dripping with New England vibes, and around 20% of the residents are 65 years or older. So you'll be in good company when you're swapping stories about the good old days. Every day in Worthington is like a scene from a charming Hallmark movie. Except it's a little more fun. They've always got something to do here, like they have concerts on the green. If you want more information on that, there's plenty of it. Just go to experienceworthington.com. All the events, including Fun Day Sunday, you'll find on there. Besides all that good stuff and plenty of people your age, Worthington is affordable. Here's their numbers. Their cost of living is 12% below the national average, meaning home price is about $420,000. The average rent for a two-bedroom apartment is about $1,458, which is not bad considering how nice this place is. They have a livability score of 94. Number eight, Ankeny, Ohio. Ankeny, Ohio, where retirement meets good food, craft beer, and a dash of boredom. Yes, it's in Iowa. There's some boredom going on here. It's actually been voted several times as the most boring state, but that doesn't mean it's not a great place to live. A lot of people like a little boredom. Not everyone needs to go bungee jumping or whitewater rafting. Some people like to sit on their porch with tea and read for four hours in retirement. This is a nice suburb of Des Moines, Iowa, and it sits just north of downtown. Ankeny is a spot for retirees who enjoy the finer things in life, like chowing down on delicious local eats and sipping craft beers. They have a lot of local owned and small businesses in this city. But it's not all food and shopping. Ankeny's got miles of scenic trails perfect for walking, biking, and scooting along at whatever pace you like. Plus, they've got golf courses as far as the eye can see, so you won't have a hard time finding an excuse to stay active while living here. Uptown Ankeny is a place to be for quaint, downtown, vibe type thing. You know, it's not a big town, but 
they've got this nice little downtown area. This is a city that's doubled in size since 2000. When you're looking for healthcare, they're just 20 minutes away from downtown Des Moines and all the hospitals and doctors you're going to need. Here's the numbers. The cost of living in Ankeny is 11% lower than the national average. The median home price is about $349,000 and average rent for two bedroom is $1,314. That is not bad. Here's the best part. Livability score is 94. Is it perfect? No, pretty close and it's affordable. Number seven, Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas is a pretty interesting place. It's a classic college town. Lawrence is home to the University of Kansas and it sits along the Kansas River. There's plenty of things to do for someone that's retired in Lawrence. I mean, they've got a lot of people here that are over the age of 65 and probably most of them are on social security. So you have plenty of people in the same situation as you. Go golfing. They got a few golf courses. They got the river right there. Not a bad place to live. If anything's wrong with you, they got LMH, which is Lawrence Memorial Hospital. It's been quite a few years since I've been through Lawrence, Kansas, and it, it gave me that, you know, Mayberry, Andy Griffith vibe every time I went there. I think they're on the verge of becoming popular, especially with the retirees. I mean, they kind of already are, but I think they're about to grow in that department in a big way. Let's look at the numbers. The cost of living in Lawrence is 4% lower than the national average. The median home price is about $310,000. The average rent for a two bedroom is $1,053. That is not bad. Not top of all that, they've got a livability score of 89. Number six, Appleton, Wisconsin. I've talked about Appleton before. This is a great place to live. It has one of the highest rankings I've ever seen when they actually question the locals about what kind of grade they give the city. 92% of the respondents thought favorably of Appleton, Wisconsin. Nestled along the Fox River, Appleton, Wisconsin is the kind of place where retirees can kick back, relax, and maybe even reel in the big one without worrying about much else. Unless, of course, you count deciding whether to spend the day fishing or strolling along scenic river trails as a tough call, then, you know, that's on you. Appleton's downtown is one of the nicer ones you'll find here in the United States. And it's not just how it looks, and it's not just what's going on there. It's the people. Wisconsinites are notoriously friendly, and Appleton's a little bit more. It's not too crowded, it's well-maintained, and I'm sure just about anyone that moves here would fit right in. Very welcoming group of people here. Not saying there's not some a-holes floating around there, just most of them are really decent people. Here's their numbers. The cost of living in Appleton, Wisconsin is 12.2% lower than the national average. The median home price is about $282,000. The average rent for a two bedroom is about $1,105. And the livability score, 85. Number five, Brandon, South Dakota. Now, Brandon is sort of part of the Sioux Falls metro area, if you want to call it a metro area. It is outside of town. You got some farmland between them and Sioux Falls. So you're not really in the city, but you're close enough if there's anything you need to do. Brandon, South Dakota is pretty much a hidden gem when it comes to retirement spots. It's got the perfect small town feel with family friendly atmosphere and an all around high quality of life. Right now it has just under 12,000 residents and this is a newer community. Back in 1970, they only had 1,400 residents. Currently, they have just under 12,000, so most of the homes are going to be fairly new. And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, South Dakota again. Well, South Dakota, I think, is on the verge of becoming a very, very popular state to move to, not just for retirees, for everyone. This, of course, will lead to people saying, well, we don't want all those people coming here to South Dakota. We like it how it is. You know what? That state has so much space and so few people. It'll be 40 years before you really start seeing any significant changes in the way of life of South Dakota. And if you know the demographics of my channel and my age, you know most of us won't be around when those big changes happen. But what really makes Brandon shine is the stuff to do, especially when you consider it's kind of a small city. There's always something going on, and the parks are perfect for relaxing or staying active. They have the Big Sioux Recreation Area. You can fish, hike, or disc golf, which in my opinion is more fun and less aggravating than real golf. That freaking little ball haunts my dreams. 
I had to quit. Let's look at the numbers. The cost of living in Brandon is 16.1% lower than the national average. The median home price is about 365,000. The average rent for a two bedroom is about $1,032. And the livability score in Brandon is 88. Number four, Grand Island, Nebraska. In case the word Nebraska tipped you off, you should know this is a great place to relax. You know, no one's going to talk you into going mountain climbing, skiing, or spelunking. Look it up. But next on our list of the best Midwestern cities for retirement couples living on just Social Security is Grand Island, Nebraska. This cozy city of about 50,000 folks is brimming with parks, trails, and plenty of outdoor fun. Just no mountains. But what really makes this place shine is it's a great community and it's really affordable. It's in Nebraska, so you know the people are going to be decent. They're going to be nice and they're probably going to be pretty welcoming. This is also where you'll find the Nebraska State Fair. It's over there at Fawner Park. So there's no shortage of things to do. Do you love history? Check out the Museum of Prairie Pioneers and dive into some of the area's rich heritage. Plus, with farmers markets, local festivals, and easy access to nature, Grand Island offers a little bit of everything for those looking to enjoy retirement without overspending or sitting on your porch swatting bugs. Here's those numbers. The cost of living in Grand Island is 13.4% lower than the national average. And I will tell you right now, I found another study that said it was 16%, but the official is 13.4. The median home price is about $260,000. Your average rent for a two-bedroom apartment is $1,152. And their livability score is 80. Number three, Merrill, Wisconsin. This is a great place if you're looking for a place that snows a lot. Yeah, you'll get some weather here. If you're looking for an affordable place to retire on Social Security, Merrill might just be calling your name. Nestled along the Wisconsin River, this charming little town offers plenty for retirees who want to have an active life alongside natural beauty. Merrill is a good looking town. And it is pretty good distance away from just about everything. But it still has a good size hospital. So like I've always said, retirees need doctors more often than 20 year olds. So this is a great place to live. Their only real knock, I would say, is the snow. It does get pretty bad up this way. Merrill has its own historic home district. The Three Stone Arch Bridge is a must see if you're visiting here. And if you like to be outdoors, hiking, kayaking, mountain biking, and even cross-country skiing, that's a bit of a rough sport, especially if you're retired. But I do know a lot of retirees like to do it. It's not as hard on the joints as going for a run, you know? Just gotta have some serious lungs. I was actually watching a thing from the local news. Last year, the city hosted Kayak the Wisconsin, an event drew people from all over the state. And it's becoming a bit of a tradition here. Let's look at the numbers. The cost of living in Merrill is 18.3% lower than the national average. The median home price here is about $175,000. Solid. Average rent for a two bedroom apartment, about $1,073. And their livability score is 67. Not the best on this list as far as livability score goes, but it's still respectable. Number two, Fergus Falls, Minnesota. This one's a little bit further north than the last one we did, which was Merrill, Wisconsin. So again, if you got a problem with cold weather and snow, just bypass this one. But once you get past all that snow and all that cold weather, you have some of the most beautiful summers you will find in the United States. That is one thing Minnesota has going on for it. Really the whole upper Midwest, if you can get past the brutal winters, the summers and the spring are so worth it. Fergus Falls is southeast of Fargo, North Dakota, and it's got the Otter Trail River flowing right through town. I have an army buddy who lives in Fergus Falls. He's the one that suggested this should go in the list. And one thing he said, if you visit any place while you're there, make sure you go to the Outstate Brewing Company. They're not paying me to say that. It's just his recommendation. And he's living on Social Security and a military retirement. And he says he does just fine in Fergus Falls. He also does a lot of fishing, which is cool because this place, like I said, has the Otter Tail River in town and it's surrounded by about a thousand lakes. It's kind of Minnesota's thing. Here's a fun thing. Fergus Falls is home to Otto the Otter, a giant 15-foot statue of an otter that's become a quirky town mascot. You can find Otto hanging out around Grotto Lake. If you visit, snap a selfie with Otto. Send it to me. 
It's also home to a local ghost, Joseph Whitford, a settler who roams the prairies at night. While there's no hard evidence of this guy, like all ghost stories, it sure makes a fun story to tell around a campfire or over a cup of coffee. At least do that to an out-of-towner. I'm sure all the locals have heard it 150 times. Fergus Falls is a great place to live, and like I said, it is very affordable. Here's the numbers. The cost of living in Fergus Falls is 15.3% lower than the national average. The median home price is about $210,000. Average rent here for a two bedroom is only $909. Now I'm giving you the 2024 numbers, so if you're watching this three years down the line, don't start giving me a hard time. I just got an email from a guy about a video I did six years ago. He said my numbers are way off. I explained his calendar was way off. He should look at the upload date. And the livability score in Fergus Falls is 84. Not bad. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to one of these places, there's a link for home and money in the description area below, and they can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. Also, if you are going to retire in a cold weather state, which one would it be? Let us know in the comment section below. All right, on to number one. And number one, Muncie, Indiana. So some of you may groan because Muncie doesn't have a great reputation. And really, I think it's a reputation they earned in the past. Muncie does have some crime and they don't have a lot of jobs. But if you're retiring, you don't really worry about that. All their other stats are outstanding. Housing, health care, cost of living, commute, amenities. It's all there for you in Muncie. I mean, their crime rate is only 38% above the national average. That is not bad. Like I've said before, you got places like Detroit and Southside Chicago that have crime rates in the 400% above the national average range. So 38 is nothing. No city, no town, no nothing is immune from some kind of crime. But if you want to stretch your retirement dollar and live on Social Security, this is one of the best options in the Midwest. As far as cities go, I'm sure there's some very small towns that would be just lovely for you. Muncie is also known as Middletown, USA, and it's a hidden gem for retirees that want a budget-friendly lifestyle without missing out on things to do. This small city is packed with parks, walking trails, and a strong sense of community. This is also where you'll find Ball State University, and it adds a youthful vibe to Muncie. It's also their number one employer. Side note, they have an interesting ghost story here too, the Muncie Ghost Light. It appears on quaint country roads just outside the city, and nobody can really explain where it comes from. Some say it's haunted, while others claim it's headlights playing tricks on you. But it's definitely become a part of Muncie's charm. In local news, Muncie recently renovated the Cardinal Greenway, a massive trail that's perfect for morning strolls and bike rides. It's one of the longest rail trail pathways in the state. Here's the numbers. The cost of living in Muncie is 17.8% lower than the national average. The median home price is $127,000. That is doable for just about anyone on Social Security. The average rent for a two-bedroom apartment is about $916, and their livability score is 80. All right, that's today's video. You really enjoyed it, and since you did, why don't you click on one of those videos that's appearing right now? It's a suggestion from YouTube. All right, everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.